We are going to continue our series of postmortems on the Texas high school or on Texas college teams. Uh, today, we put a bow, a big smelly bow, on the 2016 Rice Owls. Fine. Rice ends up going 3-9, and nine, and honestly, that's a lot better than we thought they were going to be about four games into the season. Yeah. Um, once they lost that double overtime game uh, to North Texas, that's when it started feeling like, uh oh, uh oh, this this might be zero and zero and twelve. But they end up going three. They end up winning uh, three of their last six, uh, including uh, including two of their last three. Um, and they look. Rice was a bad team, and we'll we'll chronicle that in this postmortem. But I think that the headline here is that this is a relatively forgettable year, and it sounds like they're going to keep David Bailiff, which is probably good but yeah, we yeah, like coach Bailey we do we want him to stay exactly so first question in our postmortems what went right um <laughs> oh wow um I mean the uniforms are cool the uniforms are cool the uniforms are I really will cool. say I will say this that there are a couple things they did sur- that, like well that you wouldn't expect like which would surprise you for example they were actually pretty good in the red zone once they didn't get to the red zone enough, but when they were in the red zone, they ranked 25th in the nation in in red zone scoring uh, percentage. So that's honestly uh, uh, pretty good. Um, you know, overall, that's probably the, the the best thing that they did. They didn't. They, then they did things that you expect Rice not to do. They didn't commit penalties. Um, they were a pretty clean team in that regard. Right. Um, but overall, that's about it. I mean, as far as as far as things they did well. About it, mm. so there's that. So now that's that's so what? And okay, I want I want to say one other thing. Okay, all right. One one other thing they did right is that when the quarterback played well, whoever it was, when the quarterback played well, they were actually a serviceable football team. You see that in all of their game, all of their wins. Prairie View A and M, they threw the ball really well with uh, Tyler Stelling. Uh, in their win over in their win over Charlotte, they got a great game from Tyler Stelling. He threw for a touchdown pass and ran for two more scores, uh, two hundred seventy nine yards and ran for another ninety three. In their win over UTEP, that was the Jackson Tyner show. Jackson Tyner had a great game, and for me, that was the thing. This whole team revolved around how well their quarterback played because everything else around them was relatively static. We'll yeah. get into all the things they did poorly. All that was static. The only thing that was dynamic was the performance of their quarterback. And when their quarterback played well, they tended to play well. Now, let's get into the things they did poorly. And we'll start with the fact, I mean, it's it's a lot. Let's start with the fact that they gave up a ton of sacks. Their offensive line was not good. And their offensive line was not good in pretty much anything. Okay, they were 81st in the nation in rushing yards per game, or rushing yards per carry. Uh, they were 98th in the nation in sack percentage. Um, this was a team that that did not do a good enough job opening up holes for the, uh, offensively. This was a bad offensive line. Yeah. That's the that's very bad. Uh, so a, I think a lot of the offensive struggles can be tracked back to this was not a good offensive line. This offensive line underachieved. They did not play well. Right. Period. You can put it. You can put some on Tyler Stelling. You can put some on Jackson Tyner. They they certainly were not good. You can put some on the running backs. They certainly were not good enough to make up for it. Yes. But it starts for me offensively that the offensive line was not good for Rice. And then there's the defense, and the defense was a trash horse all year long. <laughs> it was just really bad, and it's not like they were. It's not like there was one thing they did really poorly. Right. They were bad. All over the place. Right. Okay. They're all they were 116th in the nation in yards per carry allowed. Five point four yards per carry. If you give up five and a half yards a carry, you're you're not going to win a football game. Right. I don't care how good your your passing offense or passing defense is. Oh, and by the way, their passing defense was trash. <laughs> their passing defense get, was dead last in the nation in yards per pass attempt. Ooh. 128. They give up 10 yards a pass attempt. Yeah. I mean, they got yeah. torched. This defense was just not good. And by the way, they didn't force turnovers. They were they were minus they're they're almost minus one in the turnover margin on average, which is 118th in the nation. Yeah. 
they were just not good. They, they didn't pick the ball off. They didn't force fumbles. They didn't recover fumbles. They didn't do much of anything yeah. defensively. So, for me, like, there, th- those were the two big things that went wrong. There was Their defense was really bad in 2015. It may have been worse in 2016, or at least not better. Yeah. And then the offensive line just completely imploded. Yeah, and also, if you're like looking big picture, I think the rest of the conference got better last year. I think that's they, true, too. they didn't. I think, I, think the, I think Conference USA took a nice little step forward. Yeah, and Rice did not. Well, and especially, I would say especially the seller. Like, yeah. the, like basically, they got left behind. Well, because just look at what the other teams around the state were doing. You yes. know, it's like, okay, there's some changes here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and for me, that is, I, I, think, I think that's a really good point, is that Conference USA was better, and a lot of the reason why Conference USA uh, was better is that the bottom got better, is that... Um, is that things got better from you know um, things got better from the 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 basement the basement moved forward. If you look at the teams that were really bad last year, yeah. um, teams you know teams in their division, I think that division got better. You know UTEP UTEP was probably the exception to that, but like North Texas got better, like Southern Miss got better, UTSA got better, yeah. like all those that's teams I mean. got better, and Rice got left behind. Right. So that's that's a big that's a, a big problem. So you start looking forward to 2000. Uh, or first of all, let's let's name a team of VP. Boy, it's hard. Um, I mean, I, who who do you go with? Do you go with a guy? I mean, I don't know if there there is one. To be real honest, like one of the guys. This is going to sound like it. This is going to sound like it's it's damn with faint praise, but like. Jack Fox, their kicker slash punter, actually had a pretty nice year. Right. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't say that in a, um, I don't say that in a, in a, a, a kind of flippant way. He right. was actually a pretty good punter. He averaged more I than mean, forty yards a punt. When you're grasping at straws. You look at stats. That might be the way you go. That might be the w- yeah. the way to go. Def- I mean, defensively, there weren't a whole lot of guys. If you want to say, like, Emmanuel Ellerby had a nice year at the linebacker spot. Right. 118 tackles on the year. That's really, really good. Average more than ten, uh, ten tackles. Per game, right, and and in a in for a Rice team that seemingly always has a next guy who steps up. Like remember this year when we came in all excited about Alex Lyons, right? Like now, and because Alex Lyons took over, uh, and he was he was the guy when we expected. Um, God, who was the who was the, the linebacker a couple of years ago who we were really crazy about? Um, that I, I, God, I, that just tells you how 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 you know, forgettable he was. Was it? Um, I should have done some research before this. I'm sorry. You always do this. I really do. You're like, hey, let me try to remember this really obscure thing I used to know. I know. I I, I knew it at one point. Yeah. But basically, like two years ago, two years ago, like Alex Lyons, or last 2015, Alex Lyons became the the leader of that defense. Um, he, or, you know, th- really, two, really in 2014 he did. Yeah. I guess it was Brian Nordstrom. No, who am I? Who am I thinking of? I had a guy. Nick Elder. Nick Elder's here. Okay. So we, we thought that he was going to be the guy. It ends up being Alex Lyons. Well, now Emmanuel Ellerby has taken over that linebacker spot. He is the number one He's the number one cop on that defense right now. So if you're looking for an MVP, it's probably Emmanuel Ellerby. He had a really, he had a really nice year and a forgettable year otherwise. So let's look ahead to 2017. And, I mean, first of all, let's, let's start with the fact that this offensive line has to get better. This offensive line absolutely positively has to get get better because if it doesn't it doesn't matter who else is coming back. Right. Like that's for me that's that's the biggest thing that that has to come up. And um and look, I mean they're they're bringing back it, it looks like they're going to bring back their entire offensive line. It was a pretty young offensive line. They're bringing back the entire offensive line. That offensive line has to take a step forward. Um I believe um I mean, look, I, I think they found their quarterback of the future in, J- in Jackson Tyner. I yeah. think that he's the guy. I think that's the guy they want to to be the guy. Now, you know, maybe J.C. Granado has something to say about it, but I think that he's going to be the guy. The other thing about it is that their running backs do come back. Samuel Stewart, uh, I feel like they found a, a kind of a game-breaker in Austin Walter this year. Um, and then from a defensive standpoint, you know, they were pretty young, and we knew that it was going to be a bit of a struggle defensively, but they bring back Ellerby, they bring back Destry White in the in the secondary. Uh, JT eBay, uh, Blaine Paget. The problem for me is that they need somebody to step up on this defensive line. Somebody's got to step up. Maybe it's Brian Womack. Yeah. 
you know, maybe it's it's Blaine Padgett or Preston Gordon, but somebody's got to step on the defensive line. You feel like you have a leader at the linebacker spot in LRB. Right. You feel like you have a leader in the secondary in Destry White. They need a leader in the front, in the defensive front, to step forward. So, for me, that's the biggest thing. It sounds like David Bale is going to be back. I'm glad for that because I think that they that's what they need. They need that right. they need that um, continuity. But, I mean, for me, this all comes down to whether or not this offensive line can take a step forward in 2017. That's the big headline big for if. 2017. Tough. Rice House.